So, you want to hear how to fix this story, eh? A new one that won't be similar to Fortune's 4. A story closer to the classics, like Pandora's Protectors, or The Savior 6. Even Hyperion's Hunters. Well, have I got a pitch for you! I can't keep doing that voice for the whole video, but if you couldn't tell, this will be my pitch for Borderlands 4. And a little disclaimer, I haven't played Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, I've just seen little bits about it, and the trailer for New Tales from the Borderlands just came out, so I don't know what happens in either of those. If anything that I say in my videos is in those, uh, that just means Borderlands is a predictable series. But we're just here to try and make it not a boring series, because Borderlands 3 burned me so hard in its story department being the weakest aspect about the game that I'm here to, you know, fix that for the next installment. This is just going to be a bullet point video though, deeper explanations will be in other videos. So let's get this started. So where are we going to be in Borderlands 4? Well, here's a little... Here's a few of the story bullet points. One, it's about 10-ish years after Borderlands 3. A lot of things have happened, a lot of things have changed, a lot of characters are older, lots of new characters are showing up. Another point, there are sirens everywhere. Because Tyreen fused with one of the strongest beings in the known universe, the Destroyer, and then died, the siren system that, you know, travels to the next host to create them as a siren, the power of the destroyer just bowled right through the siren lock that kept the limit down to six or seven sirens at a time, that sirens are now kind of everywhere at this point, because anyone and anything can become a siren. Another point, because there's sirens everywhere, there are vault hunters everywhere, either the sirens picking up vault hunting and trying to open up these new vaults that are getting disturbed by all this siren energy about, or people inspired by the fact there's sirens everywhere, making them join their crew and trying to be like the greats and become successful vault hunters. And so they're just dime a dozen everywhere that you are going to have to be very unique to fix the main issue. In the past month or so, fast travel systems just stopped working. No one knows why. Well, some people do, but they're keeping that a secret. And you're a new batch of Vault Hunters going on to this Air Express to travel to the Crimson Raiders to help them out with this whole fast travel breaking down. But that's where it leads into the main gameplay style. You fly in, you crash. You know, classic Borderlands 2 shenanigans. But, we're not just going to be in these locked areas of where it's just like, ah, there's a mountain in my way. I, it, we're just stuck in this small area. It is going to be open worlds. Yes, plural, because we're still in Borderlands. There's many planets to explore, more than just, you know, a small section of a city, a small, you know, swamp area. Uh, you're actually going to be able to explore the planets, explore the people and the different places around it like seriously why did borderlands 3 take borderlands 2's world of there's it's extremely diverse with an ice area a jungle area a volcano uh, many different kinds of deserts some of them are rocky some of them are purely sandy some of them are inhabited with coral pirates there was diversity in the world and what did they do with it Ah, Pandora is just one giant desert box with occasional alien artifacts. Nothing interesting. We're not even going to explore the old area and get you a moment like in Borderlands 2 where you went back to Borderlands 1. Well, no more. All of the Borderlands are going to be explorable. No mountain will be able to stop you. Unless it has a gun. And you're probably wondering, without a fast travel system, and the fact it's going to be open world, where's your home base? You're your home base. You will be able to take out a small, you know, destructible camp where you can rest up to change up the time, upgrade your equipment, and craft using weapon bits. And that's another mechanic I want to add in. 87 bazillion guns is a massive number, but those were always locked in standard prefabs. What if 
you were able to break guns apart and put your own version together instead of trying to roll the dice of just like, ah, oh, I need this pistol, but it keeps on not spawning with the right stock, or when it does, everything else is pretty crap. You're able to take those guns and break them into their components of where you can get this thing's stock, which is a blue rarity, but then uh, you throw away its white rarity handle. And then you're able to put together like a fully blue gun. Pretty cool. And that will make legendary hunting, you know, an actual hunt, because you actually have to find the legendary pieces to a powerful gun. Pretty fun, right? And with the fact it's going to be open world, there's going to be a lot more, you know, vertical movement with the Vault Hunters. You're not just going to be landlocked of just like, oh, when we have a plane, then we can truly fly around, and then you're just stuck with that plane because it's just like, I want to keep moving around. I want to keep going to places. And then final bullet point is uh, each Vault Hunter is going to have a very unique personality that is informed by their own story quest. Because it's an open world game. How can you have, like, a consistent, you go from place to place to place, like a classic, you know, straightforward story, if uh, there's a chance that, you know, you're not in that part of the world right now? Each character is going to have their own, like, side story that is exclusive to them to keep you exploring the worlds and not just on this straight path, follow the main mission, and getting trounced because the missions keep on overleveling you. And that will bring me to my final part of this video, explaining the Vault Hunters. Because there's going to be a lot to explain for these new kinds of open world Vault Hunters, like uh, the main fact. We're slightly going back to Borderlands 1, 2, and pre-sequel of where you have one main skill ability that slowly gets upgraded and modified the farther you go down each tree but also the fact that your trees aren't fully completed. You actually have to go around the different worlds and find different upgrades for your trees that are, like, the really cool aspects, like, uh, think Axton's bubble shield or dual turrets or magnetic, those kind of aspects. You actually have to find those and attach them to your, you know, skill ability to upgrade them. So that way, your, you know, skill trees aren't just completed by you just sitting around chewing on XP. You actually have to explore the worlds and be modified and upgraded by the experiences around you and all that hokey dokey stuff. And another thing, all the art you'll see in this next section, yes, there's going to be art. It's, pay attention, but not too much because this is all concept art. These are not final. These are just uh, art that I had a friend quickly draw up, which thank you for that. These are just to give you the general idea of what the characters are like. But enough of the disclaimers and fluff. Let's actually get to the characters. With the core four. And first up is the Wrangler, Junior. A large Viking looking man with an Australian accent who says he's from Elpis, but it's hard to believe him. His skill ability is calling his winged pet to either attack enemies, cause a distraction, or scavenge items for you. He is great for beginners because he's got an ally to help him with opponents or opponents you just can't hit, and his other skills are built on the more like survival and outback nature to him. The next Vault Hunter is the Gambler, Lady Luck, a masked woman. No one knows who she is, but she says that she'll tell you who she is if you beat her in her own game. And so far, no one actually knows who she is, because how do you win against someone whose entire skill ability is take a gamble? She uh, is definitely the most adamant for explore the world to get better upgrades for your abilities of where you can find different coins different dice and different cards to use for your gamble ability of either flipping a coin to get a very binary outcome of heads or tails or flipping multiple coins to get even more random rolling dice to see how high and fast you can go with your streak or how many shots you gotta put into an enemy or drawing from a deck of cards that you've slowly collected throughout your travels they are a very 
random character. Think like Claptrap from uh, the pre-sequel of where they're useful as a general character, but when you activate their skill ability, you gotta be prepared for anything, especially in this open world. The next Vault Hunter is Fane, the Animal Siren. Some say she's a wild child that was raised by animals and then killed those animals to go up the food chain until eventually she found her way all the way to the tippy top of Vault Hunter. Her skill ability is where she goes into this blood rush animal mode where she invokes the spirit of an animal of her selecting and goes on a killing spree. Very similar to, you know, Brick or Craig's fighting style of where you ditch your gun and you go full melee. But you gotta be careful because ditching your gun in a game like this is pretty dangerous. If you do it at the wrong time, you could be the next thing hunted. And the final Vault Hunter out of the core four is the Multi-Manager. A robot with a very funky name, One One. Spelled O-N-E, numeral one. It's weird, but it explains their skill ability that they are able to split into Alpha and Digit. Two robots that if you played Borderlands 3 and you really like the gameplay style of Zane switching between his copy and himself, this is that but as an entire character. Of where this one's pretty complicated because your inventory is split between your two bots whenever you split. And so that means one of them will have the sniper rifle and the other one will have the shotgun. And so you maybe want to, before you enter a fight, leave the sniper rifle guy in the back and run forward with the shotgun one. Or you could just stick together and be a stronger hole, but you won't have as many fancy tricks. And so that's the core four and small little nuggets about them. Now, there is more Vault Hunters, DLC Vault Hunters. Yes, bringing that back, because Borderlands 3 ignored them. And the first batch is known as the Misfit Vault Hunters, of where it's uh, two extra Vault Hunters that fit in with the rest of the crew. One of them is Norman, the Gardener. You remember the plants from S Fight for Sanctuary? Well, one of them got sentient and is now a Vault Hunter. Ain't that fun. And the other one is Dr. Mash, the Snatcher. They have a collar that they're able to throw onto an enemy and possess them. Very, very interesting in an open world scenario where you could just be walking around as a bandit for like a few hours and then pop, you're back to normal because someone shot you. And then, there is the Lost Vault Hunters DLC. Oh, another pack of Vault Hunters? Why is that? Because Borderlands 3 didn't have any. I am very sore about that fact, and this one is a direct call out for it, because these are Vault Hunters that could have come from Borderlands 3, because they have the exact same kind of skill tree mechanic, of where each skill tree has a ton of different skill abilities inside it, and they have four skill trees. One of them is Sir Calibur, the Pawn. He is a knight-like Vault Hunter, using his action skill ability to summon in magical melee weapons to take on his opponents. Very tanky, and each tree is about a different style of combat. And then there is the pop star, Melody. Her skill trees are all the different facets of being a pop star, either doing some dance moves, using a area of effect musical speaker to help your allies or hinder your opponents, to live stream to the internet to rack up combo points or do an ASMR stream and keep everything quiet, or finally just calling in an angry mob to help you or even bodyguards. That is how you make extra characters for Borderlands 3. And so they're here, because the more the merrier, and we're not done, because there is another DLC pack. Yeah, three packs of Vault Hunters. But this one is the Legendary Vault Thief pack. 
and I don't have any art for them. Because they're supposed to be secretive until, you know, the videos come out about them. I can't even tell you if there's only two in there. I mean, likely, but hey, you don't know. But what you should know is that this video is coming to a close. And if there's anything about Borderlands 4 you think I missed, you think I should add, or... If you just want to increase engagement on this video, there's comments down below and uh, subscribe to make sure you're notified whenever I make another video about Borderlands 4. Now, uh, for these last few things, I'm just going to leave up the art of the characters. Thank you again for the art. And I am really excited to hear your ideas and see if this actually reaches Gearbox. Well, why are you still here? Is this on like a playlist or something? The video ended like two minutes ago. Okay, since you're down here, I guess I can tell you one little thing. A little teaser, if you will. I'm gonna make Claptrap funny again. Mark my words. Now scram.